Well, y'all, we're back on out. We've had the old Ford on the charger here for about an hour and a half. We're gonna hit her up on the boost and see what this old girl will do. Now, Trix didn't make it out with me. Went ahead and fed her her lunch. I had me a meatloaf sandwich. Then, an old girl, she ain't as young as she used to be. She don't like this cold no more. I can't say as I blame her. But, I got to try to get this done today. So I'm going to give the old Ford another try. See if she'll kick over now. So we can get on with this. So let's see what she'll do. Kick it up on the boost there. And... Let's see if she'll hit a lick. We just never know. Maybe we'll get lucky. Well, she's a beeping. And you can see, this is what it does. It does the same thing. That's all we've done. Just not doing nothing. But, we're going to try a few other things. Let me set y'all aside, and I'll bring you back in a sec. Okay, what we've done, we turned the key on. And then what we do is we hold down the OK button right there with the key in just the on position, not in the start position. And I don't know if you can see it there, but up on the dash, you'll see test. And this is a onboard test routine that's in this little low focus. Now, it's supposed to cycle through the menu. And for whatever reason, that ain't happening. Well, you wouldn't believe it. But as soon as I turn the camera off, even though the menu up there still says test, I tried to put it in the start, and it's running. And hence, that's just what the problem's been from the get-go. You can sit out here and turn the key for sometimes an hour. It won't hit a lick. Give up, go in the house, come back out. And it may start the first time. It may take you turn the key five, ten, who knows. And like I said, just as soon as I turned off the camera, here it went. Let's try it again. We turned it off. Let's see what happens now. And there you go. Starts on up. She run a little rough. She been sitting here a while. You see? Still not dependable. And I still can't trust it. So what to do now? Well, let's give it one more try and see. So I gotta try to figure out how to hold y'all and hold down the OK button at the same time. Bear with me, folks. Here we go. Got that OK button held. We'll put it into the first on position and it should go back in that test menu okay it's in the test menu so now we're supposed to be able to scroll through it let's give that a try now
there we go it did it now the first thing you're going to see here is it's got gauge sweep we don't care about that then it's got this sort of orange screen green screen blue screen multicolor screen it's got an LED test where you can see all the different functions on the dash light up it's colorful especially at night when you do this and you got a chime test it's musical goes through all the chimes it's annoying it's got your eco mode gear shift and some kind of number I don't know what it means another one your EEPROM version manufacturer and it's got no trouble codes and it gives you your speed gauge which if you start this up when you're driving it it'll show you the speed as well as what your tachometer is registering it's not running right at the moment and your mileage on your odometer which that ain't correct and your fuel percentage fuel flow which since the engine isn't running that's not registering your engine temp but your battery level now this is the thing I wanted to check see right now it's showing that we got a battery level of 12.1. Now, this particular version of Focus has a battery sensor on the negative side of the battery. And here, a month or so back, that terminal was extremely corroded and eroded. And the corrosion had covered the entire sensor. Now, I did take that cable off and I cleaned it up the best I could in water and baking soda but I'm thinking that sensor wasn't in the best of shape but what I wanted to check is what the battery level was when the car starts now maybe we can see that when we turn on the key to start it see it pulled that battery down to 8.9 volts then it was showing I think 11.1 I'll have to re-look at the video to tell and of course now it's showing 15.2 because the alternator's kicking in charging the battery now I gotta run out and disconnect that battery charger so I don't get any feedback from the battery charger but you can see it started even though I had to turn the key initially Oh, about 20 times, and then I almost gave up, turned it one more, and of course started for the first time. Now, it started every time since then. But, what I'm going to do now to try to rectify this starting problem, is I ordered. So now what I'm going to do to try to rectify this intermittent starting problem, I ordered a brand new negative battery cable assembly, which comes with that sensor on it. And it was rather pricey. I think it was, for the cable and the sensor, $169 from Pomoco Parts. Plus, I got a brand new battery. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get this shut off, pull that charger, and I'm going to get that cable taken off, get the battery out and replaced, and we'll give that a try. And I'll set you up while I'm doing it, so you can see me fumble through it. I want to apologize right now, should I let it slip a few not so nice words along the way. I'll try to behave myself just for y'all. So, let's get her done.
So y'all went and got a variety of wrenches just in case didn't get the right one. We're going to go ahead and start getting these cables disconnected to get that battery on out of there. Now I got those battery cables off, but as you can see, even though I cleaned and wire brushed and did all that to this negative cable, in the last two months it's got corroded again. You see it right there on the end of the wire cable coming in, and I will tell you, it was all bright and shiny clean when I put it back on last time. But it's got all corroded again. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cable on off of here. Got a brand new one. As well as a new battery. So next step, get the cable off. Get the battery out. Slap a new one in. And that's probably going to be easier said than done by the looks of it. So, we got the old cable off. So we're part of the way there. Now to get that battery out of there. And that don't look like it's gonna be no fun. millimeter socket and a ratchet so off to the shop I go to get that so we got some sockets deep well we're gonna give her a try
we got the battery hold down strap off. But we're going to have to take the battery box, get enough clearance, get that thing out of there. Well, we need another tool. Let me show you this in case y'all ever have one of these Ford focuses how to get the battery out. You have to take and release this end panel from the side panel and pull it out. You gotta do that on both sides. Not sure you can see it, but you might be able to see it right here. But you do it by lifting this tab up off of this tab right here. That gives you the clearance you need to get this battery out of here. Just in case, like I say, y'all ever have a focus and need to change your battery. It's no fun. Getting old, people. Getting old. Oh. But I got it out. It wasn't easy. Note to self sell the focus before it needs another battery or five years, whichever comes first. That was no fun. New battery. Let me uh, give you all another tip on these Ford Focus. Or at least this Ford Focus. Yeah, come here. Come here. What, Miss Cleo? Yep, I wobble too. Let me show you this. Because I didn't realize this. Now, this is a 2013 Ford Focus. There is no place for a key or any way to open the trunk from the outside if you can't release it from inside. It's got a little push button to release it on the dash. But I didn't think about that. And I'd already taken the battery out when I decided to open the trunk. Of course, that was impossible. So I had to climb in through the back and release it. Who in the world designed a car without a place on the outside of the trunk to put your key in and open the darn trunk? That was a chore. And that's what you saw me doing earlier. So now, get our brand new battery terminal brush. Get the new uh, terminals cleaned off. And we're going to go ahead and Wrestle this brand new Autocraft battery back in. Now it's a brand new one. Been sitting in the trunk a bit. And we gotta get these terminals cleaned back off. So let me get that done. It's not food time. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
even with a brand new battery. You want to make sure you get those battery terminals cleaned back off. Nice and bright. I hear you, Cleo. Folks, the hardest part of all this, not only getting the battery out, but getting that battery box put back together. That ain't no fun. So now, we gotta get this new negative cable on. Well, here again, even though it's brand new and shiny, we're gonna use our terminal brush right here. Scrape off any machine oil a protective coating off of that brand new cable so looks all nice and shiny inside so now we're ready to put it on now to get the hold down strap back on I think we're to the easy part now okay we've got the battery hold down on we're going to give that positive cable a good uh, brushing with the battery terminal brush. Looking good. And now we're going to hook up that negative cable first. Well, y'all, a little out of breath. Sorry I didn't film all that struggling to get that battery back in and that battery case put back together. Battery case came apart real easy. And then I finally got the battery out, as you saw. But then, getting it all back in wasn't so big of a deal until it came to getting that battery box put back together. <coughs> now that, that part of it, took me about an hour. Because really need two people. That would have been nice. But there was only one. But I finally got back together. And I finally got the negative cable back on positive it's all finished up let me show it to you as you can see there's the brand new negative cable all nice and shiny with a brand new sensor whole $169 worth and went ahead and cleaned up the positive cable like I told you, even though it was a brand new battery, you still want to make sure you wire brush the battery posts. Make sure they're all nice, bright, and shiny before you assemble the battery cables back on. We've got the strap on. Everything's good to go. Or we'll hope. Because now we got to see, after it's been sitting here a while. Because the whole process, and I didn't film it all, part of it would have had me uh, 
saying some not too nice things. Plus, all you're going to see is my backsides bent over this car. But now, let's see if it'll crank. Come on. We can't get in the car. Because, like I told you earlier, if you don't pop that trunk, well, it's got a battery in place. The only other way to pop it is by going inside the trunk. That was a real pain. <clears throat> we'll latch that later. Let me put y'all down. I gotta get the seat back. Okay, we got the seat back. Okay, got plenty of chimes. Yep. Got dash. I can hear the radio. We'll turn that off. Now we're gonna see if it'll start. <laughs> and it does. So we'll let computer go all through its things. She's still a little rough. We're going to have to drive it a bit. So it'll even on out. But luckily, according to the old uh, temperature there on the dash, we've warmed up here right before the sun sets to 54 degrees. But that was way more of a chore to get that battery in and out and that cable replaced than I've ever had in my lifetime. Now I was a professional engineer for about 37 years or more. I don't know what these young engineers are thinking. They definitely ain't thinking about working on these things. And I'd hate to be the one on the assembly line putting them together. But I want to check that battery level when we start it this time. So we're going to turn her back off and go through the test program again. And I know this is probably boring some of y'all. But somebody out there some point in time might need to know all this stuff. So, we're going to hold down the OK button again. And I got to figure out how to do that and hold y'all too. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put y'all down and do what I got to do and bring you back when we get in the test program. OK, now we're back to the test program. And it's real easy. You just hold that OK button down. Turn your key on to the on position. Do not start the vehicle. And hold it there till you see this test screen show up. Which I hope y'all can see right now. And then we're going to cycle through it. First thing is gauge sweep. We all have been through all this. So we're just going to cycle on through it. Till we get to the battery test. Because I want to see how far that starter pulls down that battery. Well, we're showing 11.8 volts on the battery. And I didn't do it right. I turned it off. So now I gotta go through this all over again. You can tell I'm getting tired, folks. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We'll get you on in here. Maybe you can see it. I'd like to see it. But now I got sunshine. It's always something. It's always something when you're trying to film here. So I've got to watch that. It's already down below 12 volts. See what it 
pulls it down to when I start it. Well, it only pulled it down to 10.5. That old battery was pulling it down to 8.9. Now you can see it's charging again at 15 volts. <laughs> and now you can see the engine temp is registering. It was showing uh, 40C. You can see the fuel flow is showing, hopefully. Now the odometer reading is not right. This car does not have 203,430 miles on it. Not according to the speedo, anyway. And it's 2013. Uh, You can see the engine RPMs there now registering. Still no uh, trouble codes. So the only thing we can do now is see if it always starts. I mean, since the initial trouble today is starting it where it wouldn't start after I turned the key after I charged the battery and turned the key about 20 times and then got disgusted and was about to leave and then turned it one more, started right up. And that wasn't because of the low battery, that's just the problem. So say, I could take now that I replace the cable, replace the sensor, put in a brand new battery and I can say it's fixed. Now I can go somewhere, like maybe up the street, soup foods. I go in and go shopping. I can come out and this darn thing may not start again. I'm going to try to just turn it off. We're going to leave it sitting here. Now I'll come out in the morning and see if it'll start, of course. That don't tell me nothing either because sooner or later I'm going to have to trust it. And it's either going to be fixed or it's going to let me down. But even with the old battery, once it was charged, it started every time today as it is now with the new battery. Now I am going to let this sit here and idle a bit and get that battery a good charge on. Probably let it sit here for about 30 minutes. I got a lot to put up anyway. Well, y'all, all I can do now is see if that corrected the problem. Like so many other things I tried, I thought it corrected the problem because it started up. And then maybe the next time it didn't. Or it may, may have started for two or three days and I thought everything was fine. And then I'd go somewhere, turn it off, and it wouldn't start again. And that's the process we'll have to go through now. It won't be pretty if it lets me down again. But I don't give up. If this don't get it, we'll go to the next solution. Because now, as you saw in the last video, I need two cars going. Probably always need two. And I need to get the rest of these going too. So y'all, get things cleaned up, tools put up. I want y'all to take care. Stay safe out there. God bless y'all. Until I see you on the next video, bye for now. That's running. It's all you can ask for. By the Lord's grace. Maybe this guy. We will see.